Welcome to Spontaneous CNC Build. I've been playing around with hole sensing end stops on this little breadboard. Now this is for onto on the axis, if you type in, you know, it, it, for it to go too far of the program's got an error in it and it tries to run to the end and clash with structure, then this is a sensor that will hopefully trigger the a, a signal to the Arduino to say, hey, turn everything off, stop, there's a problem. And it won't run any further. So the whole sensors are magnetic, so you can use these uh, super little magnets. And so you can put the whole sensor on the structure or on the axis, and then you can have the magnet sat somewhere and if it comes by, pff, it triggers a signal. So you can buy these really super, super cheap if you want to make this stuff. I was just playing around trying to figure out how to do it. But I'll link you to a video I did the other day on these LEDs I ordered, and they were literally 10 times smaller than what I expected, but they were so cheap that I think they were $6 for 140, including four or five different colors. So I'll link those. So on this board here, all I have is the LEDs soldered on there. And now this was a bit of a prototype as well. I was trying to figure out what kind of resistors I use and things like that. Now the, the, the LEDs are really sensitive, so and the colors are different voltages as well. So I think the blue is the, most, is the least voltage. It runs at 3.3 volts to two volts. Uh, some of the other colors go up to eight volts. So I've just got a, a battery pack here just playing with this and that'll be 6 volts or so 5.5 with running on the, on the uh, batteries so I was quickly going to go through this because there's a lot of videos on whole sensors but they're kind of I think they're a bit over complicated I struggle there's, there's different types and I'll link with the one I, I've done and I, I'm not very really into electronics at all I'm not very really advanced so this this guy you just put a, a plus and negative voltage on the two left pins so the 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 rounded shape is to, towards us, so you just place a, a. I can actually do this as a. I've got the pins for it. So here we'll put a, a plus. So we put a plus into the left pin, and here I've got my power plug put them to the end, so uh, plus is the lower and negative is the upper. And I'll just put a plus onto the left pin. And then we need some small jumpers. So what happens uh, in the basic configuration is if we put this magnet here, it will pass on the voltage to the end pin. Now, we're watching videos, there's all different configurations, so people are like, oh, when it by default it reports half voltage. Well, this one doesn't, this one reports nothing. And when you uh, actually switch it with the magnet, it'll go from nothing to the full voltage, which is 6 volts. And I think this guy will run up to 24 volts as well. So that's really good. We want to use it as a relay for a more powerful device. But we're just using it with these lights. So, uh, so we've got plus and minus in there. Well, now we'll put on... So here I've got two lights in this board. and So I've got two little jumpers I soldered on. For... So I put it in negative for each one. And then I've got two 10k ohm resistors, one for each light. And then one of the lights is red, one of the lights is blue. So I'll plug those guys in. Now what I'll do, I want one of these lights to stay on all the time. And one of the lights to come on. So uh, this on the right I think was the blue. So we can plug this in. To the final volts. Okay, so now we've got blue light on all the time, hopefully. And then the other one will put the, the negative in the ground. And we'll put that into the ground. And the other we can just put the positive to the switch. So this shouldn't come on. So, yeah, so that's not on there, you can see better in the shade. And then when we go with the magnet, it should come on. And it's it's depending on the pole on which side as well. So I can't just see where this uh, lights do go.
Okay, so that's not working for some reason. Uh, maybe these are lost. Uh, these are basically diodes, so we're on the, on the right, we'll go to the positive. Put that to the positive line. And then from the switch, it's the negative that switches that joins. So we'll click on that and try that. There we go. So I've got a really bright light here for the because of the macro and it's dark in my room so we can see it switching in there. So we've got blue on all the time. Now I really wanted the blue to be uh, not not as light because it's going to burn all the time. So to make the bulbs make the LED last a lot longer and also for it not to really stand out but just to see that it has power. I don't really need it to be super bright like that. So I have a these are just 10k resistors at the moment. And this is 100k, so I'm going to put this in line, so we can just unplug that, and we'll stick that in, where that was. Okay, so now I've got this uh, 100k resistor, and plus the 10k one in line as well, so it's got 110k resistance now, and we can plug that in, and that's a lot dimmer, so if I, uh, I put my hand over, I might be able to see anything, and then trigger the other one, you can see the difference. Uh, I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera. So now we have a not so bright blue, and then if it triggers, red. Now what we do is we just basically link this trigger lead that we have here. I'm using it to light a light up here, but we just put that onto the back to the Arduino or wherever your end stop trigger is, and that's pretty much the setup. Now I've read a few things about a capacitor, which I don't think I have here. Oh, here he is. So I've read a few things about there being a lot of line noise because you've got a lot of ampage in your cables for the motors shooting, you know, starting and giving a lot of interference and they give false signals back to the end stop. So I've heard putting a, a capacitor in there, so I've, uh, I've got a 47 nanofarads, is it? And you just put it on this signal and on the ground. So we go onto the, the ground there, and do the same as a signal. And that's all they do, so I'm gonna put that in the, in the, in the system to... So yeah, this is a, a little circuit for a, for a a whole sensor end stop. So now I'm going to put this on a circuit board. So here it is guys, this is uh, it turned out okay, it's a little bit rough, but I was kind of working it out as I was going, so a few things got unsoldered, a few things got, yeah it's quite a simple circuit really, yeah a few things got taken off, <laughs> so it, it's basically the, I can get this so you can see it, so the top line coming in is the, is the plus, so the first section that goes through a lead, and then if you can see where it says the B just below there is the lead. And then, so on the back, that lead goes through a, a I think it was a 100K resistor over to the negative, which is the second down. And so you can see there the second down is a negative. And then the positive just goes up into the left pin. Now on the negative pin, the middle pin goes across. So I can bend that up without breaking it. A little ceramic capacitor. Uh. OK, 
Okay, I kind of used a bit of the uh, resistor lead in and clipped off stem and put that just straight up into the, the middle, the negative. And then the lower one is the signal, so that comes out all the way down and all the way back to the pin in for the third, third wire. And it also goes through the it also goes through the light, so right near the middle of my thumb now there's a lead there. And on the back that goes through the the smaller 10k resistor and goes back to the the positive. So you can see it's there, it goes from the outside of the lead back into the positive there. And that's pretty much it. And because these are double-sided, they're actually separate, these little prototype boards, they're really cheap. You get you know ten for eight dollars. You, you can you don't get as many shorts if you bend stuff over and touch, you've got a lot less possibility of short and stuff like that. So I can just bend these over and uh, the capacitor's okay. But the resistors with those long leads, they uh, they can easily short, but because of the things it's touching, none of them actually go for, uh, are connecting to anything. So if we plug this in, I put this connector's nearly almost as big as the board. But it's, I'm probably going to directly wire it in. I'm going to use some uh, flat network cable and uh, wire, wire it straight into it, because the network cable have really good shielding. And then if you get like cat seven or something like really good children. So if we plug this guy in. Uh, which one is it? There we go. So I'm gonna turn the light down here. Camera may go crazy. So we can see. So the blue's quite faint. I mean, it's easy to see for me, but on the camera, it's difficult to try and with the macro, it's, it requires so much light. And then the magnets are here. There we go. I shoot everything out. And with this sensor, when it's close up like this, it won't trigger until it's really, really close. But in the other direction, if we uh, if we lift this away, I can get that in the shot. It's actually a, it's a lot more distance, so you can really play with it. Uh, so you see, it's like a centimeter there. But if we just add this running in, it's very close. So you can really play with it when you configure it to what you like. Now with this I'll probably just put some heat shrink over it. So that fits over there quite nice to protect it from all the crap and the CNC. Or just glue it, maybe just glue it, but that won't look as nice. But I just kind of like the circuitry look anyway. Yeah, I thought I'd just go through that because it's something I just learned uh, you know, how to do. And a nice little project for electronics, I thought. And it's very quite messy, but by the time I've done six of them, I'm sure it'll be nicer. So yeah, any questions, no worries, just send me a, just comment. And if you're not already, subscribe. I'll put all the links to the components, exactly what I used in the description. Thanks very much, see you again.